Now in the case of explosive forming, what we do is, instead of using a punch that we use in conventional forming technique, we are using an explosive charge here. So we detonate that explosive charge and the shock wave developed due to that explosion is used to deform the material. And due to the application of this particular shock wave or pressure wave, the material deforms and the final shape of the sheet material depends on what's the shape of the die that we are using. When we come to the system, we will get a more idea of that. And the explosive that we commonly use is high energy chemicals like TNT, RDX or dynamite. And sometimes we go for gaseous, gaseous mixtures and propellants as well. So to carry out explosive forming technique, there are two strategies. One is unconfined or standoff technique and second is confined type or contact technique. Let's see each of them. Now in the case of unconfined or standoff technique, what we use is, uh, let's go to the system. Here we have a container and inside the container we have kept the die. And over the die we are keeping the sheet material with a proper, a proper strong rigid clamping. And the whole container is filled with a medium, usually water. Now, in this medium, at a certain height from the sheet material, we are placing an explosive charge. Okay, so this distance between this explosive charge and the sheet material, this is known as standoff distance. Similar term you have already heard in like uh, abrasive uh, jet machining or abrasive water jet machining. So here also, this distance between this explosive charge and the sheet material is known as standoff distance. Now, in the sheet material, on the die you have mounted this sheet material, that's a system to create a vacuum, okay? So this the function of this vacuum is to evacuate air from this gap in between this sheet material and the die surface. Now why we should create a vacuum beneath this workpiece material? The intention is that when the, this explosive is detonated and the shock waves are generated, what happens is the sheet deforms. Right? So if there is a presence of air in this particular portion beneath the sheet material or in between the sheet material and the die, due to the sudden, sudden deformation of the sheet material, the, if there is air, that air will get compressed. And since we are imparting a very high strain rate, the deformation will be at, at really quick speed. So because of that, the air in between the sheet material and the die gets compressed and gets heated up pretty quickly. And since this, all these things happen in a very short time period, there won't be much time for this high temperature air to dissipate its heat to the die material. So in no time, this heat will be dissipated to the sheet material and the sheet material may get oxidized or melt. So that can distort the surface quality or it can distort the feature as well. So in order to avoid that, we evacuate the air uh, from the space beneath the sheet material in between the sheet material and the die so that it, it will facilitate the forming operation as well. At the same time, it will, create, it will aid in the generation of a more perfect surface. Right? Now, when we detonate this particular charge, what happens is that a gas bubble is formed and whatever pressure wave is generated, that pressure wave will be moving towards this workpiece material. Right? That the pressure wave will be impacting onto this workpiece material. And since the die, shape of the die is like this, the exactly the same shape will be taken up by the sheet material as well. Now the waves uh, that will be moving towards the sheet material or the velocity that we are imparting to the particles in such a process is like around like 120 meter per second. We have already discussed in the earlier lecture like what um, 500 meter per second means so something like that so 120 meter per second speed we are imparting a velocity to the sheet material so accordingly the strain rate will be high and we can we will get exact proper deformation now the thing is that uh, as i said uh, a few slides earlier we are using water here now what's the function of water the function of water, uh, water has different functions. The function of water in explosive forming is that it, first of all, it will act as a proper energy transfer medium for the propagation of the waves. Now, the second thing is, even if the waves are propagating, how uniformly it's being transferred to the sheet material. So it will ensure that water will facilitate it more compared to air. Now, since the whole thing happens beneath the water, beneath the water surface, the sound of the ex explosion can be muffled. So there won't be any sound pollution. Now, 
rather than going for a rapid direct mechanical impact we are using an explosion a pressure wave that too inside a medium so due to the presence of this medium the application of the energy onto the work will be smooth and hence the um, rupturing or the fracture of the material can be avoided to a great extent now the main process variables involved in uh, in this uh, standoff technique or confined type technique is that what's the type of the explosive you are using and what's the amount of explosive you are using because the type and the amount that will define how much energy is, it's going to dissipate at the time of detonation right now the distance between the explosive and the sheet material which we defined as standoff distance earlier so that distance should be optimum if the distance is uh, too low that means it will rupture the material if the distance is too high then the deformation won't be proper right? now the medium of the medium that's commonly used is water um, and the size of the workpiece material uh, as of now there is no limitation for the size um, uh, since we can control the energy using the type and the amount of the explosive that we can use and workpiece materials obviously defined because some some material require more more energy source and some require less and the vacuum in the die as i said earlier it's it's very critical in the case of uh, most of the high energy rate forming techniques now the advantage as i said earlier uh, in the previous slide as well the energy is transferred uniformly efficiently towards the workpiece surface so the deformation can be um, done effectively creating uh, or generating more complex features onto the surface material sound pollution is less as a water medium muffling of the sound uh, damage to the workpiece is on the lower side if you are providing an optimum stand of distance between the two and there is no thickness or size constraint or the material property constraint as well because depending on the explosive type and size we are using we can deform it deform any material provided you got an appropriate die system and uh, when we to create a big product big product or big feature uh, if you use a conventional forming system the process requirement will be on the higher side if you use a con com uh, explosive forming technique this can be done with relatively easier and more economically as well now the distance advantage is the identification of optimum stand of distance um, which which pretty tricky as i said earlier too high or too low both have its own uh, disadvantages now since we using vacuum that will add to the cost element it will increase now the dies that we are using in an explosive forming technique since we are imparting very high energy onto the workpiece material so the shocks that will be generated to the entire system will be on the higher side so if you are using very small dies definitely it will fail so the dies should be larger and thicker to withstand shocks commonly this technique is not used for smaller thin work pieces because uh, it will easily rupture off and the handling of the explosive it's it's dangerous as well so it should be it's to be done under the regulations defined by the corresponding government now in the case of the confined system or contact technique what's the difference is uh, we said earlier in the case of a uh, standoff technique we used water as a medium and through that medium the energy we were propagating in the case of a contact technique or confined system what we use is there is no water medium so here is a cat we have a die system here is a cartridge filled with the explosive and uh, when we detonate this the shock wave will be propagating into this inside this we are placing that particular workpiece which is usually hollow right so when the waves will be uh, waves move in inside to this this waves will deform this tubular workpiece into the die cavity and it will make this tube to bulge or take the shape of the die cavity now as in the earlier case as well here also we require to maintain a vacuum to, to avoid adiabatic heating um, this is commonly used to uh, to carry out operations like bulging or flaring um, like more of an expansion of the tube to a specific shape or to create uh, expansion at specific portions inside the tube maybe at the to at the top portion or in between or something like that uh, for that only we are using the contact tactic so in uh, the advantages of a confined system is that in the unconfined system what was the limitation is um there then some of the energy will be muffled up or dampened by the medium water so here we are directly taking up the whole energy of the shock wave to the material so there is no loss happening here in terms of energy 
So it's much, much more efficient than the confined system. However, the dis disadvantage is that we are taking up the whole energy so the dice can fail, requirement of vacuum. And we are using vacuum to evacuate the air between the tube and the die. Right? However, there is already air inside the tube as well. We are not evacuating that. So when the compression wave comes in, that air can be can be compressed and take up high heat and that heat can disturb the workpiece as well mm, can make oxidization oxidation or melting so that's an issue and this is also not suitable for large and thick plates now let's look a video so in the case of standoff technique as a daily in the container we got the dye and this is a sheet material here we maintain the explosive charge and we are maintaining vacuum here right now when we explode this thing shock waves will be propagating downward and deform the material in accordance with the shape of the die. Okay. In the case of contact technique, this is your die. There is no water medium. Here the cartridge and as you, as you seen earlier, the hollow tubular part is kept inside this and when the waves move inside, it will take the shape of the die. 